Hey, welcome to UK Wildcrafts. So April's a really abundant month for foraging. Most of the plants I featured in the March videos are still available now, and there's also a lot more coming into season. This time of year, I'm looking to forage in places that are open and getting as much of that early spring sunlight as possible. So places such as rivers and streams, or in meadows, open country lanes and hedgerows, or woodland edges. This lovely little plant here is apple mint, also known as round leaved mint. It looks to grow in damp soils, especially alongside rivers and streams. So these are the little new growth shoots you'll start seeing around April time. And this is uh, my favorite time to pick it before it goes into flower. So it's got quite a nice subtle mint flavor. It's not as strong as the other mints like spearmint and peppermint. It's native to the UK and most of Western Europe, and it's been introduced to Eastern Europe and large parts of North America. It can grow up to just under a meter in the right conditions. Its flavor goes well in sauces and jellies and syrups. And what I most use it for is for making a mint tea and its subtle flavor works quite well. So as I said, this is when it's at its best stage before it starts to flower in the summer. In the summer, it'll have spikes of pink to purple flowers like a lot of the mints do. So apple mint has rounded leaves, which do grow quite a bit larger than this. And it does have toothed edges. It looks like they're just rounded when they're at this young stage. But if you turn the leaf over, you see the the teeth are kind of curved underneath. When crushed, the leaves have a really sweet apple smell. And the leaves are covered in really fine white hairs so that they feel really fuzzy for that reason, I don't really like to eat them raw because I don't like that fuzzy texture. If you look on the underside, they're even fuzzier. And the stem is also covered in those fine white hairs. And like all mints, it has the square stem. So I'll collect some of these for making herbal tea. This is more of a tea for drinking in the morning because it gives you energy. What I'll do is boil some water and then take it off the heat and then steep the mint in the water. But I don't boil the leaves because that'll kill a lot of the nutrients. Yeah, this is one of my favorite herbs for making tea with. This and another member of the mint family, which I'll show in this video a bit later on. This is lamb's lettuce or corn salad. It's a mostly urban or coastal plant that's more common in the south and it can grow up to about 20 centimeters. It's a member of the honeysuckle or Caprifoliaceae family. On young growth, it has a basal rosette with quite spoon shaped leaves, though most of those have died away now. 
the upper leaves are more elongated and they grow in opposing pairs. After each set of opposing leaves, the stem splits into two and the stem splits in the same direction as the leaves. The flowers grow from the end of March or April. They're really small and they have five petals which are either white or very light blue. The petals are fused to make a funnel shape. And they grow in really dense clusters. and the clusters are surrounded by bracts. It makes a nice tasty salad plant with a mild sweet lettuce like flavour. It's not really much you can mistake these for apart from other edible closely related members of the Caprifoliaceae family. This is a cowslip, Primula verus very closely related to the primrose and also edible. You see the leaves are crinkly just like the primrose and have that white midrib on the underside. The main difference is the flowers. Primrose only has one flower per stem. Cowslip has many. and the flowers are smaller. They still have five yellow petals and the petals are notched. In my area, in the southwest, these are fairly common, but I've heard in other parts of the UK they're becoming quite rare. So just be uh, mindful when you're picking them. If there's not many, then maybe just leave them to grow. Just like primrose, the leaves can be eaten raw or cooked and I just treat them in the same way as cabbage. And the flowers are very similar tasting to primrose, though I actually prefer these. I find them a little bit sweeter. And they make quite a nice garnish. This is a witch elm and in April it provides two types of wild food. First of all we've got the young leaves just as they're opening. There's not much of a flavour to these but they're good added into salads. And we've also got the seed pods and these are a much better food. These here. These taste exactly like cucumber and they're nice just eaten raw. You'll know when it's time to collect these because there'll be masses of them all over the woodland floor. But there should also be loads in the trees as well and these will come out just as the tree is starting to show its leaves. So you've got the young leaves and the seed pods available at the same time. So to identify the witch elm by the leaves, these leaves are a bit more mature here. I wouldn't eat these ones because the texture goes quite 
almost like sandpaper. But to ID them, first of all, you look at the, the base of the leaf and they're asymmetrical. So one side will be higher up than the other, like that. And also, like I said, it's got a very rough texture. They're oval and they come to quite a sharply pointed tip and they're sharply toothed as well. So they're almost like little discs with the tiny seed in the middle and you eat the whole thing. Really nice refreshing flavour, like I said, just like cucumber. The fresh shoots of the bramble bush are edible. From late March through early April are the best time to be collecting them. And you want them like this, just before the leaves open properly. While the, uh, the stems and the thorns are still soft. So, like this here. Once they get to about this stage, the stems start getting too woody and the thorns start getting quite sharp. So then you just take the, the very tip part like that. You can still eat the leaves once they're open, but they're much better at this stage. So these shoots will grow progressively throughout March and April and depending on how much sunlight the bush gets will depend on how early they grow. They can be eaten raw, though they're quite astringent. I don't personally like the flavour raw, but I know some people do. They're much better just fried for a minute or so in a bit of hot butter and also really good for making tea. They're highly nutritious. If you think this whole bush, this time of year, is putting all of its energy into growing these little shoots as quickly as possible, so there's gonna be a lot of nutrition in them. I think these are a really underused edible resource look at this patch here just goes back as far as you can see absolutely covered in these fresh bramble shoots absolutely thousands of them so you could take quite a lot and it wouldn't really be noticeable This is goose grass or cleavers. You'll probably know it as the plant that clings to your clothes due to all the really fine hooked hairs. So it's a really common plant and it's not fussy where it grows. It's happy to grow in shaded woodlands or out in the open alongside paths. So I just eat the growing tip like that. That's where all the nutrition is. I don't really eat it raw just because the texture isn't very nice because of all the hooked hairs. But if you do want to cook it, I just recommend pan frying it just for a minute or so. Or another good use for it is to put it in raw into water, like into a bottle and just leave it overnight. And then in the morning, just strain these off and drink the water. And it's just like a nice refreshing, quite similar to cucumber water. So these stems are all quite young, but as they mature they'll grow up to a good few feet and they'll be trailing through all of the other plants like the brambles. They have whorled leaves so instead of being alternate or opposite they actually grow around the stem in sets of six or eight. Like you see there, circling around the stem 
would be eight leaves, and then a bit higher up, another eight. The leaves are long and lanceolate, and the margins are entire or not toothed. Cleavers are from the same family as coffee. A bit later in the year, they'll produce tiny little hooked seeds, and these seeds contain a really small amount of caffeine. I've not tried it yet, but apparently you can dry and roast them and make a really nice wild coffee. But the seeds are really tiny, so you'd have to collect quite a lot of them. Ground ivy is a perennial that is native to the UK and Europe. It's a very common plant in woodlands as well as open grasslands and roadsides. So it forms these really dense, low growing patches. And uh, it's called ground ivy because it spreads along the ground like ivy does, but it's not actually related to ivy. It's a member of the mint family. And this is the other plant that I was saying about that I like to make tea from. It's got a really deep, earthy flavor. The leaves are kidney shaped and they have rounded teeth and they can grow up to about two or three centimeters across. So one of the best ID features for this plant is if you crush the leaves and smell them, they get a really strong, musky, herbal smell. So the leaves can be found all year, but it's much easier to spot when they're in flower. So as I said, the plant grows trailing along the ground, but the stems with flowers grow upright, like these here. And the plant flowers from April throughout spring. The flowers are blue to purple and are funnel shaped. And they grow in clusters of two to three, growing from the leaf axils. And it has the distinctive square stem of all mints. If you roll it in your fingers, you can feel the square stem. I mostly collect this plant in the spring. So I collect the leaves and the flowers and use them fresh or dried for making herbal tea. And they can also be used as a herb in placement of something like rosemary. And they're good used in savory dishes with egg and as seasoning for meat. And they also go really well in soups. They add a nice extra depth of flavor.